Ah, something from Centron's grindhouse phase. Didn't I already riff this? Hey, it's conservative intellectual William F. Pumpkins. Richard Clement is spelling advisor with an E, and that's his costume this year. There is one magical, haunted evening each year when all the scary creatures come out to prowl through every neighborhood. But enough about prom. But here's the scariest monster of all. A dance mom. Do you know why? This little witch doesn't know it, but she's taking some frightening chances of being hurt. Maybe badly hurt. Maybe butt hurt. Her costume is very, very dangerous. Can you see the things that make it dangerous? What about that mask? Oh, it's a mask! Oh, she thank can God. hardly see through those tiny holes for her eyes. If you were wearing that mask, here's what it would be like. You can see straight in front of you, but unless you happen to turn your head, you wouldn't see that car coming as you start to cross the street. You could be run over. Then your parents would get all your candy. And unless you look down, you can't see that you're coming to a curb. You could trip over Seth Green. Ow, oh, that hurts. It's bad enough to take a tumble on hard pavement, but it would be even worse to sprawl out on the street in front of a car coming. She literally curbed her enthusiasm. Now let's imagine that we're in that car. Can you see her clearly? I can't see anything. Why not? What is there about her costume that makes it hard to see her? As the driver of a car or truck, you might not see her until it's too late. And that's really scary. It could haunt your insurance premiums Before forever. We think about some ways that the little witch could see and be seen better. Let's take another look at her costume. Whoops! Down she goes again. That was just the cocktails. It seems as if she's collecting more bumps and bruises than candy tonight. Let's see if we can help her, shall we? And by helping her, maybe you can learn some things that will help you stay safe at Halloween. Nah, probably not. First. We need to turn back the clock and start this whole evening over again. Doodly, doodly, doodly. One of the problems with this costume is that it's too long. It's too easy to trip over a long, full skirt. Just ask Ed Wood. So we can shorten the skirt. You should always shorten any skirt, pants, hey, kitty. blacks, or cape. Elvis want a cookie? Too long or floppy. Shout out, Murderinos. Now the broom. That's a clumsy thing to carry and it's something that you're likely to trip over in the dark. God knows you never pick one up at home. It's usually easy to shorten brooms. See also shotguns. Or round off the sharp points of pirate swords and other costume parts that can trip you or scratch you. Promotional consideration provided by Nerf. Cardboard brooms and swords are usually safer than wooden ones, but it's safest not to carry anything like that in the first place. Halloween is stupid. Now what else might we change on this costume to make it safer? Airbags? What about that color? Remember how hard it was to see the little witch because of her dark costume on a dark night? A minute ago? Yeah. We should always wear light, bright colors on the street at night so drivers can see us. What about this color? A white costume makes an unusual different kind of witch hmm. who's more likely to be safe on Halloween night. And in most interactions with police. A good way to make any costume easier to see at night is to decorate it with reflective tape or reflective patches. And write reflective poetry. Some costumes come with reflective material already attached to the cloth. Pre-ruined. Here's what it looks like to a car driver. It's easy to see, even on the darkest night. How did camera technology get worse in the 70s? And while you're putting reflective tape on the costume, you should also add some of it to the bag or container you'll use to carry home your candy. Put it on your mom and your dog! Some special Halloween sacks are treated with reflective material when they're made. And it's a good idea to write your name, address, and phone number on the sack, just in case there is an accident. Stay safe by giving strangers them now, deets! how about the mask? Any problem with it? Yeah, too sexual. Do you remember how hard it was to see out through those little eye holes? Hey, they're just kids! To oh, To be safe eye holes. at night, Sorry. you have to be able to see clearly, as well as be seen. We can improve the mask by cutting larger holes to look out of. Pro tip, take the mask off before cutting out the eye holes. Won't make that mistake twice. There, that's better. But there is an even safer way. Just go back to bed. You can simply not wear a mask. 
We'll use motion capture instead. Oh, you think you need a mask to disguise yourself? Well, just watch what you can do. With a little help from your parents and some scraps of cloth or old clothes from around home. An Oscar winner Rick Baker. An eyebrow pencil. Different colors of eyeshadow. Rouge. Lipstick. An old mop or wig. It's my Raggedy Ann Coulter costume. Some wax teeth. Check it out, I'm Dangar. Maybe some clay and food coloring. Yeah, that's right. How do you like it? And a few other odds and ends. It's Lil Harry Mud. You'd be surprised what you can turn yourself into. I'm Gene Shallot. I'm the Lemonade Bandit. Scaramouche. And German Expressionist Garfield. Whether you buy a costume or design your own, be sure that it's made of flame retardant material. That means material that won't catch on fire easily. Stop that snickering, children. Robert Altman's Halloween Party. Now our little witch has turned into a beautiful princess, and her new costume is much safer. And yet more flammable. But there are a few other things you should do before going out. First, eat a big dinner. If you go trick-or-treating while you're hungry, you'll be tempted to sample some of your treats while you're out, and that's definitely not a good idea. Save your candy for breakfast. Keep an eye on the clock. In many places, the police set the hours that you should trick-or-treat. Trick or treat only within those times. Neighbors should be ready with treats for you, and drivers should be more careful to watch for you during those hours. What's Paul Revere on about this time? Make sure you carry a flashlight when you go. The light will not only help you see where you're going in the dark, but it will also make it easier for others, including drivers, to see you. Have fun, dear, and if you bring good and plenties into this home, so help me God, I'll disown you! Darkness is my home. Blood will be spilled this night. Always travel with a group, not alone. It's safer still to have a parent along to keep an eye on things. Or a priest or rabbi. And of course, you should always walk. Riding a bicycle at night is always dangerous, but it's even more dangerous to try to ride in a costume at night. Just stop trying to enjoy things, as okay? As go from house to house, stay on the sidewalks as much as possible. Can we cut to a new shot, maybe? If you have you. to walk in an area where there are no sidewalks, walk as far off the roadway as possible and face the traffic. That way you can see what's coming and get out of the way if you have to. Ah, the ludicrous rule. Cross streets only at brightly lighted corners, not in the middle of the block, and never between two parked cars. Oh, you're, you're going to do it you now, aren't you? start across the street, cross quickly, but don't run. And don't stop in the middle of the street for any reason. Stay in your own neighborhood when you're trick-or-treating. In fact... Your neighbors are probably hoping to see you in costume on Halloween. And it's safest to visit people you know. Like the Wagners or the Johnsons. If you don't know the people very well, don't go into their homes. Most people enjoy having trick-or-treaters come to their doors. But there are a few people who will do things to hurt kids. They're called Republicans. They might put sharp or hard objects in candy and apples. Or they might put something on fruit or gum that could make you sick if you eat it. Or they might just give you carob or spelt or something. Ugh. To be completely safe, save your treats until you get home. Then ask your parents to help you check them carefully to make sure that there's nothing in them or on them that could hurt you. The safest treats are usually candy or gum that come in their own wrappers from the factory. Trust corporations more than people, kids. Fruit should be washed before you eat it. Even vampires need vitamins. And all candy bars and fruit should be sliced so you can be certain that there is nothing hard or sharp inside that could hurt you. Hey, be nice to that chunky. If you're not sure whether something is safe or not, don't take any chances. Throw it away. Or at least give it to charity. But let's get back to the fun part of Halloween with the princess and her friends. Night blindness. Crunchy riff, man. Meanwhile, I was at church at a harvest party. Almost everyone enjoys a good joke or riddle. Citation needed. What you guys eat for breakfast? 
What? Those toasters. <laughs> so what, I need like a tight five to go trick-or-treating now? What's a wiener when you take out its inside? What? A Halloween. Where does Dracula keep his money? Where? In a blood bank. <laughs> Here, have some candy. Ouch, tough stoop. However, some practical jokes and pranks aren't so funny. If you should break something, it wouldn't be very funny to the owners hey, Mike or to your parents, who might have to pay for it. So keep your jokes funny and harmless. Oh, like Jimmy Fallon. Oh, no, wait, you said funny. Tonight has been a magical night. Mm. We saw Meh. a scary monster changed into a beautiful, happy, and safe little princess. How about you? Will you follow the lead of the little princess and have a safe and super Halloween this year? Together we can have the happiest and safest purge ever. Goodbye, boo.